1, beginning with the 41st verse. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a second in people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zephaneth Paneah and gave him Aseneth, daughter of Potiphera, priest of An, to be his wife. And Joseph went out throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the field surrounding it. Joseph stored up such huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do you ever feel like you come up short? Think about it in school. You study and study and study for a test. You think you're going to ace it, and then when you get the grade back, you don't even hit where you've been averaging come up a little short. Or maybe you look at your budget for the month and you said, you know, if I just had a little more money, I could do this, I could buy that. Or maybe you look at yourself when it comes to your health, when it comes to your well-being, when it comes to your appearance, and you say, you know, I'm an attractive person, but I'm not quite where I'd like to be. Maybe I'd like to lose a few pounds, maybe I need to gain a few pounds. Maybe I would like to get rid of that little bit of flab. Maybe that blemish just won't go away. And so we, in a sense, come up short where we want to be. You know, we could spend a few minutes this morning and just lamenting of all the different areas that each one of us comes up short. Think of the pity party we could have for ourselves if we did that. What was us? Life is terrible. But hold on a second. Before we go on this pity party rage, let's consider what we do have. You see, as we look at ourselves and we look at what we have, we need to recognize that things are pretty good when it comes to who we are and what we have. Not because of us, but because of what we've been given. And so this morning we want to take the book of Joseph, or take this account of Joseph, and recognize just what each one of us has and see that we are abundantly blessed. It was kind of a story 13 years in the making. This overly competent in himself teenager had seen some hard times. You see, Joseph was a little mouthy when he was younger. Didn't get along with his brothers so well. They, they hated him so much, they sold him into slavery. And then for the last three years of his life, he was sitting in a prison in Egypt. And yet during all that time, away from his family, in slavery, in prison, the Lord God was with Joseph. And the Lord God was going to have a change in fortune for Joseph. You see... He's going to allow Joseph to be able to interpret some dreams. The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, had some disturbing dreams, and God allowed, God orchestrated this meeting between Joseph, this prisoner, and Pharaoh. He allowed Joseph to interpret those dreams. Things are coming. Seven years of bounty and seven years of bust. So be ready for that. And it's at this point that Joseph's situation 
completely changed. I would imagine his head must have been spinning to say, you know what, this morning I woke up in the jail cell and now I'm standing here before Pharaoh and listen to what he's going to say to Joseph. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen, put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command, and people shouted before him, Make way! Thus, he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name zephanath Paniah and gave him Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of An, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Who could have imagined this? Who could have written this storyline? That this forgotten foreigner now is raised to be number two in the land of all of Egypt? Nobody could have dreamed of that. Nobody could have thought that this is going to be a logical thing. And yet you look at everything that happens here. Pharaoh says, you're going to be second in command over everybody. He takes his signet ring, that ring that was the gave the ability to issue official royal orders. Joseph exchanged the prison rags for the finest Egyptian threads. Instead of shackles around his hand, he now had a gold chain around his neck, symbolizing this is someone in whom Pharaoh finds favor. And then they put him on a chariot and take him throughout the land, say, this guy is in charge of this big public works project that's coming. And to make it absolutely, abundantly clear. Now, Joseph is given a wife of royal birth, the daughter of a high priest, to make sure everyone knows he is second in command, he has power. But not only did Pharaoh exalt Joseph, God himself exalted him. We kind of find it neat, don't we? When we see someone who is wildly successful that came from some humble beginnings. There was a man, he was the 15th child of 17. He had two years of schooling, two years of formal schooling. Nobody expected much from him, and yet he ends up opening up his own printing company, founding his own newspaper, published author, many books. He was an inventor. Still using, we still use some of his inventions today. Those of you with your glasses, you might give thanks to him if you have bifocals. He was a statesman. He was the ambassador to France. He was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Everybody know it was Benjamin Franklin? Yeah, he came from some humble beginnings. People didn't expect much from him. But it was as though, as though Benjamin Franklin was a man who brought on all this success for himself. No, it was by the grace of God that this happened. You think of Joseph coming from those humble beginnings. You think of Benjamin Franklin coming from those humble beginnings. But we're not here to swap success stories on how each one of us pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Now, if you look at ourselves, if you look inwardly, you actually see kind of the opposite is true. To say that we came from humble beginnings would be putting it mildly. Because you and I were born steeped in sin, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. You know, that would be enough to keep us out of heaven. That would be enough to keep us destined to hell. But like Joseph, you and I were in chains. We were in prison, not in some dank, dark dungeon in Egypt, but incarcerated from that inescapable prison of hell. We weren't imprisoned in chains of iron, but chains of iniquity. And then think of what we do every day. We keep sin and sin and sin upon itself. I said before, Joseph was kind of mouthy when he was a teenager. Think about how mouthy we could be. What 
what we say, what we tweet, what we snap, what we post, what we let fly out of our mouths without regard for anyone. Because I have the right to say it, right? First Amendment, I, I got that right for free speech. I can say anything I want. And if you don't like it, you can take off. That's, that's fine. You're so self-absorbed. How does this affect me? I don't care how it affects other people. Think of the blessings we've been given. Think of how God has poured out his rich hand of blessing on you and how we've wasted it. You know, you might say, I am filled with talent, but I don't ever use it. I waste it. I have so many blessings from the Lord, but I quickly discard them. And sometimes, don't we think, well, there will be more later. In fact, God, I deserve more than what you've given me thus far. And when blessings seem to be in short supply by our own measure, we lash out at God. And God, why, why don't you bless me more? Why don't you give me more? Why don't you care for me more? You see, by nature, we deserve to be imprisoned in hell. We deserve to be out of the presence of the King of Kings forever. But like Joseph, God has exalted each one of us. Like Joseph, we have been the recipients of God's undeserved love. We call it his grace. Like Joseph, God has taken us from ones who have been imprisoned and given us standing before him, given us an audience with him. Like Joseph, we marry into royalty as we now become the bride of Christ king of kings. You see, everything that could be counted against us, the way we use our mouths, the way we are so self-absorbed, the way that we lash out at other people, the way we don't think about the feelings or the consequences of our actions, that was all wiped away. God declared his pardon through Jesus. You see, unlike us, Jesus didn't use his mouth to mouth off, but he used his mouth to share the good news about himself. He used his mouth to glorify God. Rather than being one who is self-absorbed, he was here with the mission to save the world. Rather than being one who thought nothing of others. Rather than being one who only lashed out at people, he took the lashings of the whip to suffer for you and me. And finally, took the cross itself so that none of those things, whether things that we are born with, that we inherit, or things that we keep on ourselves each day, none of those things are counted against us any further. God has exalted us and say, says, you are now part of my family because we are married in to his family. What a tremendous blessing that is for us. What a tremendous blessing it was for Joseph. His head must have been spinning with everything that changed so quickly. It was within a blink of an eye that he went from being prisoner to prince. And then, God said, I'm not done with you. You've been a recipient of my undeserved love. Now look at what I'm going to accomplish through you as you serve me in this capacity. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. You think back, Joseph had interpreted those dreams. And he said, you know what? You need to put somebody in charge, somebody with a good head on his shoulders to make sure that this opportunity isn't wasted. Seven years of plenty are coming, but so are seven years of want much to his surprise, and I would imagine to the surprise of everyone, Pharaoh says, Joseph, you're the man for the job. But how? 
It's not like this guy had a business degree. Remember where he was for the last 13 years of his life? He was a slave. In the last three, he was in prison. And now he's put in charge as second in command to run this huge public works project. Now, how could he do it? The Lord God was with him, was gifting him for his service so that he could carry out the immense project that was before him. The Lord God was with him and said, you're the one that needs to take care of this and I'm going to give you the gifts and the skills to do it. Just so you get an idea of just what a monumental task this was, look again at the last verse. So much was collected that they didn't have a number high enough anymore to keep record of how much was there. As I was reading this, it kind of reminded me of our national debt. Who would think of $19 trillion? Who can count that high? And rising. What about you? Do you have monumental tasks before you? Do you have things that seem insurmountable? Something like this, where $19 trillion to pay off? Well, no matter what is before you in your life, no matter what tasks you see on the horizon for you, remember two things. It was the Lord himself who put you there. It was the Lord himself who put you where you are today, and it is also the Lord himself who has gifted you to serve. You know, as I look around the room, we have so many people in here with so many different talents. We have musicians, mechanics, mathematicians. We have teachers and talkers and technicians. We have coaches, bakers and caretakers. We have all sorts of different people here today with every point on the spectrum. We have receptionists and optimists, and perfectionists, and linguists. We have all sorts of talents just boiling over in this room. And my guess is you don't just have one talent, you have many. Well, where did those talents, those gifts come from? But they come from the Lord. God has gifted you to serve and to use those things. What I want you to do this week is to spend some time just in thought and in prayer and say, how has God gifted me? What are my talents? What are my abilities? that he has given me? How can I improve upon them? How can I go to God in prayer and say, what is a way that I can hone this skill, this ability to better serve others around you, us and to better serve you? God is the one who has gifted you. God has gifted you so that you're not just a benefit to yourself but to others. And it's a way to say thank you. God has not shortchanged you whatsoever. Yes, we could sit here and lament about all the things we don't have. But flip that thinking, flip that appearance, that looking on its head and say, what has God given me? He has blessed me beyond measure. He has richly blessed me by exalting me to this place to be called a child of God. And he has gifted me with so many things that I can serve in his kingdom, that I can be a blessing to others. Let's use those gifts. Let's use those talents. We give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. This time we will gather our offering. You may be seated.